the Georgia State Panthers. Now, this is Sean Ellis's bunch. Going to pull them up on the screen here. Went eight and five last year. Uh, during the regular season, their post game win expectancy looked to be seven point eight and four point two. That's pretty good. Pretty good considering how they started out. They opened one and four. They finished seven and one. Uh, their non conference was ridiculous. It looks pretty ridiculous again this year, uh, especially with opening at South Carolina, and then you got North Carolina coming in. North Carolina, by the way, why would you do this to yourself? North Carolina scheduled uh, App State and Georgia State back to back to open the season. I mean, just just absurd, especially when you were losing Sam Howell as your quarterback. But regardless, we'll see. We'll see. Let's let's talk about the offense here. Uh, by the way, returning production here for Georgia State, number four in the country, bringing back 85% of their offense. Uh, not offense, excuse me, of their team. Number 11 on offense, number four on defense. They're bringing back 84% of the offense, 87% of the defense. This is a team, like I said, that finished 7-1 and one to close out last year. Sean Ellis has done a pretty awesome job with, you know, this little old program right outside of Atlanta, or right in Atlanta, we'll say that. Uh, Let's talk about the offense. Trent McKnight is the new offensive coordinator. He was the wide receivers coach. Uh, Brad Glenn, the offensive coordinator, left for Virginia Tech. They brought in another guy. He left for a job at Louisville. You know, whatever. Trent McKnight at least knows what is going on with this offense. I would look for them to continue on the same trajectory that they were last year. They bring back Darren Granger, the quarterback. Now, he, they've got four starting offensive linemen back as well. they got the running back, Tucker Gregg, back. Two starting wide receivers uh, for an offense that averaged over six yards per play in their last eight games of the regular season. That is pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, as efficient as the offense was, they were not great when it came to explosive plays. Their success rate was really, really good. Uh, rushing success rate number 20, passing success rate number 40, but number 109 in explosive play rate on offense. And, excuse me, number 123 uh, in explosive play rate on offense. They're number 72 in 10-plus yards, 10-plus uh, yard plays, and number 85 in 30-plus yard plays. They've got to be more explosive this year, especially if they want to come out of the gate hot. Because three of your first four are at South Carolina, North Carolina, and then against Coastal Carolina. And then, oh, by the way, they do host Charlotte in there, and we know that Will Healy's bunch can be a pain in the rear end. So, that along with, you got a trip to Army right after that. I mean, your first five games are pretty damn difficult. Looking at the defense, uh, Nate Fukua is the new defense, or is the defense coordinator, has been there for a long time. This is the same as the offense here. The, the defense, <laughs> I said the numbers backwards earlier. Uh, on offense, rushing success rate was number 23. Passing success rate was number 20. On defense, rushing success rate is number 20. Passing success rate allowed is number 40. Uh, you're number 109 in explosive play rate allowed. That ain't good. Number 79 in 10-plus yard plays. Number 73 in 20-plus yard plays. You've got to stop the big plays on defense. It's going to kill you every time. A everything else looked perfectly fine. Turnover margin, number 29. Uh, the, the penalties per game, number 39. Like, this was a good team, and they moved fast, too. They, they averaged the number 23 total plays per game in the country. This is a good football team. It just took them a little while to get rolling. Do they take as long this year to get rolling? Do you come out of the gate one and four again? That wouldn't, nobody wants that. Uh, the rest of the schedule is pretty manageable. I mean, you've got a lot of road games, but regardless, it is what it is. You, you've got some good teams here. Well, I guess my question is, can McKnight continue the offensive efficiency and find a way to be more explosive? Uh, if so, like this team is certainly a championship contender in the Sun Belt. I think this team could be really, really good. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've only got them with one conference loss. Like I think they're really good. I, I've got them at 8-4, and four, but that's because I've got a loss to Army, I've got a loss to North Carolina, I've got a loss to South Carolina. They could win any of those games. This team could be 10-2. and two. They could be 11-1. and one. I don't see them going undefeated because... I mean, this is a hell of a schedule. Uh, they, they bring back 16 starters. This was a really good team last year. I've got a lot of faith in them to be good again. But again, that non-conference schedule, just brutal. Just brutal. So, 8-4 and four for them as well. Uh, if you go by the records and whatnot, I mean, I've got them winning the division. I've got them winning the division. I've got them sitting there at 7-1 uh, and one in the conference. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. 
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.